Internet, welcome back. It's your boy Robert T. Garden here with you today talking about gear. Now, I'm not going to let this one go out of hand because gear videos can definitely blow up into some crazy conversation. This one is dedicated to the beginning videographer trying to figure out what gear to buy and in which order. As a professional videographer for over six years and a part-time educator, I have a lot to say on this subject and I think I can help you out. Now, the first thing I think most of you guys already have in mind and have already got locked up is the camera. So let's get started there. Now, if you already have your camera, this is kind of a moot point in terms of this video, and I'm sure a lot of you watching this video already have some sort of capturing device. But in today's landscape, you're in great hands because all of the manufacturers between Canon, Sony, and even Nikon had just put out the one final software update and have been killing it in the video space. You also have options like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, and you have Reds and Z Cam. So there's abundant options in terms of what you need for your ability to capture content. Now, the things that I would look at for you specifically and the types of shooting that you're into, really just consider does it have capable 4K in multiple frame rates, 24, 30, and potentially 60 frames a second, and look at what your full HD options are as well. Now typically most of these cameras are handling full HD options in higher frame rate resolutions like 120 and 240 frames a second, but just take a look at what type of shooting you want to get done and make sure that those cameras have a capable way of shooting. The other thing that I would say is make sure that you have some form of log mode, which is a picture profile in all of these cameras, so that you have the ability to color grade and get into color grading workflows so that you're not bound by just the color science that's native to the camera. At some point very soon after capturing the visual image, you'll need to be concerned about sound. Now, sound capturing devices are abundant at this point, and I'm not just talking about the onboard audio that you stick on the top of the camera. I'm talking about capturing audio from voiceovers and soundscapes that are present within the video and or the environment that you're trying to create. My preference here is 32-bit float recording, and there are a ton of different options out there that are going to get you this for a reasonable budget. Things like the F2 and the F3 from Zoom Zoom. Other things like the H6 or the H4N from Zoom as well. Tascam has very capable options for you to get these things and you have abundant options of inputs and outputs for you to be able to work with your particular workflow. The other thing that I would consider are some sort of lav mic or microphone pickups. You can get a shotgun mic to do overhead miking techniques. You can get very affordable lav mics uh, like the Rode Wireless Go. Uh, and even the Zoom F2 comes with some form of lav mic that you can attach to your talent and have them doing additional redundant captures, not just what's going into camera, so that you have the ability to have other audio, higher quality audio to work with than what's just coming out of the camera. Camera and audio are done. Let's move on to our next item. Once you have your camera and audio done, the next logical step for me is to talk about lighting. Now, lighting can be an incredibly overwhelming subject, so I'm going to again pare this down for the beginning videographer in mind. And I think you need something just like a single COB LED light, and there are abundant options where this one's concerned. Now, I've done a bunch of reviews in terms of lighting and how these things work, but my preference is for you to get something that has a Bowens mount adapter so that you can attach different modifiers and get the types of look that you want. Now, starting out as a videographer, you really only need to be concerned with mastering one lighting techniques and moving the light around to get the desired look and mood that you're going for. Now, I've posted a bunch of videos on this subject and I'll continue to do more, but if you're looking for something specifically, leave a note down in the comments so I can create more content surrounding that subject as well. But as starting out, I would look at something very simple, just like your Godox or your GVM lighting setup. You can get something for well under 500 bucks. It'll give you a light and then you can put some modifiers Boeing's mount modifiers on the tops of these things like parabolic umbrellas, strip boxes, etc. As you start to move on and progress in your career, three-point lighting setups are things that you should be considering as well. Um, again, lighting kits like that aren't anything crazy, and I'll link all of those things down in the description below. But again, don't get overwhelmed by lighting, especially if you're starting out. You just really wanna have a couple of options for you to create specific looks that you've mastered and be able to replicate those things for clients. As you move on in your career, you wanna get different lighting options. A three-point lighting setup, like I talked about, is great, and then you can start to move 
move into things like gobos, flex lights, tube lights, bulbs that are specifically designated for us in videography so we can put together practicals in our scenes and make sure that there's no banding or any of those sorts of things. But right now, just focus on getting a great COB LED and getting a good modifier. The bigger the light source, the better, but you don't need to go crazy here when you're first starting out. Just get your feet into the pool and we'll take care of the rest at a later video. Moving right along, I want to talk about your editing software. I've done a video about this as well, surprise, surprise, but looking at your editing workflow and how you're going to be working, which platforms you're going to be working on and the things that you prioritize as an editor, are you using a ton of transitions and effects? Are you more of a color workflow where you're grading more things in an interesting just cinematography style, the edits aren't that crazy? Really just consider what you're looking at. My preference is the Adobe Suite because I'm using all of the elements within that suite. I'm recording audio right now on Adobe Audition. I'm editing these videos in After Effects and Premiere Pro. I'm using Photoshop and Illustrator for my logos and graphic workflows. There's a lot of different things that I put together from the Adobe Suite. People are loving DaVinci Resolve right now, especially if you work in a color grading workflow or a heavy color grading workflow, that's an amazing option. Also, if you're a Windows user, that's a great option as well. And if you're relegated to Mac and that's your preference, Final Cut Pro is an excellent option as well. There are a ton of other options options that are out there to get you started, but these are my preferences because they have great entry level positions and can allow you to build up your skill set as you move on and start to implement different portions of your workflow like audio, color grading, motion graphics, those sorts of things. All of these programs that I mentioned here all have great options as you continue to develop your skills and move on as a videographer. Now the last two things that I want to talk about are a bit of a snooze fest, but if you're a videographer, you're going to be capturing media. If you have media, you need to store it and manage it in some sort of way. So creating SD card workflows and making sure that you have all of that stuff that's necessary for your camera and your audio devices are crucial. SD card prices continue to plummet, and now I know you can get one terabyte SSD cards. I don't really necessarily recommend that, but you can get a terabyte SSD card for a reasonable price. Once you have that stuff, captured, you need to be able to manage that media in some way, shape, or form. I've done a video about what a pre-RAID workflow looks like using HDDs and SSDs to basically edit and manage your data that you're going to have. Nobody really tells you that a huge part of your life as a videographer is managing data on these tiny pieces of silicon and plastic. It's a little nerve wracking, but that's definitely a part of the job. And making sure that you've got a great workflow in terms of media management is going to save you a ton ton of time and effort on the back end. Trust me, just take my word for it. Watch those other videos. I know you'll be satisfied. The next thing really doesn't have to do with equipment at all. It's invoicing software and making sure that the other softwares in terms of client acquisition are in place as well. So having some type of professional looking software or invoicing that's coming over that's not just necessarily a Excel template or a Google Docs template. Those things are great and they're fine, but as you progress in your career, you're gonna to want to have something that you can brand a little bit more, has different light items, and helps you account for the things that you need to, like expenses uh, and liabilities, all those sorts of things. There's QuickBooks is the go-to option. I use Wave apps and absolutely love it. Um, other things that you might want to consider would be building websites using Squarespace and things like Wix. I love Wix because I can manipulate a bunch of different things. I do my proposals, I do my delivery templates all through Wix. Uh, I do my call sheets all through Wix. It's a fantastic software to use. So again, keeping in mind the software that you're going to need both in your contracts, your invoicing, all the web stuff is just something to keep top of mind and make sure that you have a solution for. Now my final tip is investing in the soft skills that would make you a viable business. Now this isn't necessarily something that you have to buy per se, but investing in ways of communicating being a more effective leader, having the ability to delegate on set and communicating both in your body language and in your verbal communication and written communication with clients is going to serve you immensely. Now this is something that you're not gonna be learning in film school. There's not really a ton of videos that are out there talking about these types of things, but having 
having an understanding of what your body language is doing on set, how to effectively communicate to people not only on set but through email to get the exact things that you need to do your job and serve the client the best you possibly can. All of these things are going to be paramount and I'll do a separate video on what that all looks like. But ladies and germs, if you like this video, like the damn video, I post content on a weekly basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. So if that's something that you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for posting notifications. And if you like this thing, go ahead and share it with the community. We're trying to get more people to come into the tea garden land and figure out exactly what the fuck is going on around here. So if I don't see you in the past year, I'll see you in the future. This is Robert Teagarden with another video in the can. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.